Hi, my name is Alain Duval, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics Basic Series. This basic series will cover topics in complex analysis, such as complex algebra, complex differentiation, and complex integration, and much more. Please stay tuned until the end of the video to get a link to the rest of the videos via our playlist. Uh, so starting with some basic properties of complex numbers. Uh, so a complex number is really, it's, you can think of it as two real numbers. So we can write a complex number as some complex arbitrary complex number equals x plus i times y, where x and y are both real numbers. And i is oh, the well-known square root of negative 1, so i squared equals negative 1. Uh, something useful about complex numbers is imagining them in the plane, where the imaginary part is your y-axis, your y-value. Uh, your real part is your x-axis, so we can write this so we can think of representing z in the uh, plane r squared as x comma y, where z equals x plus i y. So with this we can uh, define some other uh, yeah, some other values of an arbitrary complex number. One thing we can look at is uh, the length of the line going from the origin to our complex number in the plane. By the Pythagorean theorem, this is just uh, so we can find the modulus of z. That's just the length of this line when we represent z in the real plane, our complex plane. Uh, and the length of this line is just root x squared plus y squared. Since we can make a triangle, a right triangle, with height y and base x. Another thing we can define for z is the angle between the x-axis and this line here, OP. Uh, So we can find the argument of, of z as the angle going from the x-axis counterclockwise to our line. <laughs> to our line we made with z, and this angle alpha we can call the argument of z. Uh, one other thing we can do with an arbitrary complex number is define its conjugate. It's, for its conjugate, you just take the complex part, make it negative, so x minus i, y. So we can imagine it in the complex plane as just you kind of re you reflect over the x-axis. Also know uh, that the conjugate times the original complex number gives you the the modulus squared because it, it gives you x squared plus y squared. Uh, and uh, so with complex numbers, we can do some basic usual operations we do with real numbers. So uh, with two, given two arbitrary complex numbers, w and z, we can add them, adding the corresponding complex and real parts. We can multiply them uh, using the distributive property of multiplication. Uh, you, you get wz equals ux minus vy plus i vx plus yu. Dividing them, if you multiply on the bottom, multiply w by its conjugate, it'll become all real on the bottom. And then we'll be able to separate out this uh, division of two complex numbers into the sum of a real number and a complex number, like we want. Uh, so one other thing we can do with complex numbers is establish the triangle inequality, which says if we have two complex numbers, we can establish this by, uh, if we set up if we know in any triangle the sum of two sides must be greater than or equal to the third side, otherwise they wouldn't be 
long enough to actually make the triangle. So for in the complex plane, we sub z and w, and drew lines from z and w respectively to the origin, then drew a line between z and w. We can note the line between z and w uh, is really, we can write that as magnitude z minus w. And then the other two sides will be uh, z and w. And so if we set up the triangle inequality for this triangle, we have So uh, this triangle here, if the upmost side is, is uh, z, the, the modulus of z, this side is the modulus of w, this third side is the modulus of z minus w. Using triangle inequality in this triangle, we know modulus z minus w must be less than or equal to modulus z plus modulus w. Plugging in minus w, we can get the usual form that modulus z plus w is less than or equal to modulus z plus modulus w. Uh, so two more neat things we can know about complex numbers. Uh, so two more things we can say if we have. Oh, uh, one thing we should know, we can write a complex number in, a, in polar coordinates. So writing alpha as argument of z, we can write z as minus z times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. And this comes from the, yeah, if we set up the, our usual right triangle given a point z, we can see the hypotenuse of the right triangle is minus, minus z, and the angle of the right triangle is just the argument of z. And so the minus z cosine alpha will, will give us back the x-coordinate, and minus z sine alpha will give us back the y-coordinate. So we can write any complex number in the complex plane in this form, minus z times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. And so if we have two complex numbers, uh, we can multiply them while they're both in this form and get So writing two arbitrary complex numbers in their polar forms and multiplying them together, we can get z times w equals r1, r2, r1 and r2 being their respective moduli. Uh, by using multiplying everything out, distributing everything, we get cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta, plus i, sine beta, cosine alpha, plus cosine beta, cosine beta, sine alpha. So these two things using well-known trigonometric identities, we can condense this into cosine alpha plus beta plus i sine alpha plus beta. And so uh, from this, we can notice that the moduli of z times w is just r1, r2, which actually is the modulus of z times the modulus of w. So this modulus operation distributes over multiplication. And also the argument of z times w is just alpha plus beta, which is argument z plus argument w, so the argument uh, you take the argument of something times something, you get the argument of that something plus the argument of the other thing, which are pretty neat properties. And that summarizes some basic properties of the complex numbers. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please check out the rest of the videos in our playlist.